Hi everybody, hi there. Hope you are well on this lovely, lovely Saturday afternoon. Um, let me ask you a question before I start this live. Did you used to remember um, Dragon's Den when it first came out many, many years ago? And I was one of those people that was engrossed in watching that all the time. And do you remember the first two series? Do you remember the first woman that actually appeared on that? A woman called Rachel Elnor. Now, she's been but she's the first two, she actually appeared on the first two Dragons Den, and I'm going to be interviewing her any second now to uh, find out how that came about. How does somebody come from uh, just, you know, being a normal, normal person and actually appear on that amazing show? So I'm going to be interviewing her about as well. And those of you that also know that I run my own uh, women in business conferences over the last um, 18 months, I've held... Um, four women in business conferences on average about 800 people attended those and i've um, put on stage over 80 people most of them have been women and a large percentage of those have been not speaking on stage for the first time and i connected with rachel um, um several months ago and we've been working together and we've been communicating and i'm pleased to say that she's going to be a keynote special speaker at my next Women in Business conference, which takes place on March the 24th in London at the Holiday Inn, Kensington. Not Regent's Park, because I usually have that, in Kensington. So I'm pleased to say that she's going to come on, on this live any second now. The event's taking place on the 24th of March, five weeks' time. We've got amazing other speakers that's going to be supporting the event as well. Men are welcome to attend as well. But I'm pleased to say that um, Rachel's going to be a, a keynote speaker. I'm not going to give too much away. I'm not going to talk too much. Let me bring her on. And please share this live as well, because you don't know who's going to be wanting to see this amazing, um, amazing live as well. And we can get Rachel to come on. And hopefully technology permits, she should be coming on any second now. Let me say hello to some of the people that are on the live. Hi, Viv, hope you are well. We've got Sharon Calix, who's going to be one of the speakers there as well. Um, Langford Morton, thanks very much, Langford, for coming along to the live. Um, and I'm hoping Rachel can come on now. Um, if not, don't worry. We had this problem last night with Divya. We'll just close it. Oh, I can hear her. There she is. <laughs> hey, Des. I was just trying to share. I was just trying to share this live stream with my uh, group, but I couldn't quite manage it. So. <laughs> not to worry. Not to worry. We can do. We can do that after all. Um, I don't think I'm a member of your group. I'll try and see if I can do that for you. But welcome. You're here. Thank Hi. you so much. Thank you so much. Everyone's on this live as well. Um, people are saying hello. Hello. Um, Sharon's saying hello. Farhan Mia is saying hello. Hi, Sharon. Hello, oh, everyone. Fantastic. Yeah, and thank you so much, Des, for inviting me on and inviting me to speak at your conference next month, which I'm really looking forward to. Thank you so much. My honour, my pleasure. I've got a lot of people that are interested to come and hear, meet you and, and hear what you have to say. It's going to be mm -hmm. amazing. So listen, let's crack on. Like, Tell us how, I mean, where you started from and how you became... Uh, the first woman to appear on, on Dragon's Den. You know, tell us, tell us all about how that came about, please. I'd love to know that as well. <laughs> well, Des, I mean, do you want the magical, metaphysical answer to that question, or would you like the kind of practical, material, 3D realm answer? Because <laughs> in my experience, these things work on two levels. Okay, mm. so let me, te let me tell you both, both, both those levels. At a very practical level, I had a brilliant PR guy, a guy called Ian Hayworth. He might even be watching. And uh, he, ba <laughs> he basically said, oh, Rachel, we're going to make you famous. You know, like it worked for Richard Branson. It worked for Anita Roddick. You know, this was back in kind of the early 2000s when there were all of mm. those kind of high profile entrepreneurs breaking on, on the scene or been around yeah. for, for many years. And uh, so he started entering me into awards ceremonies. And um, so that's what got me kind of on the circuit. And that's where people like the BBC look when they are, um, you know, looking for people to appear on television. They tend to look like if you're looking for a top businesswoman, Mm. You look at who's winning awards, and I, I happen to be shortlisted for the Verve Clicquot Businesswoman of the Year Award 
in 2002, and I won an Ernst and Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award in 2002. Both those things Ian kind of queued me up for, and I I got an approach from the wow. BBC. Yeah. How, how was that? I mean, how did they approach you? What, what, did you get an email, a phone call? Did you think it was a joke? Well, so now let me tell you the metaphysical, magical <laughs> route that happened. Because if I, if I think back to when I was very young, I used to, uh, when, you know when there were just like a few television stations back in the 70s, you only had BBC TV, BBC yeah. One, two, 2, and maybe ITV had just come on. And I, I remember saying to my grandma, one day I'm going to be on television, grandma. One day I'm going to be on television. And she's like, oh, yeah, right. And I would dance along, you know, to things. And, but I, of course, I didn't know how and when. And then yeah. back in, like, the early 2000s, there were all those programs like Changing Rooms and Ground Force, sort of reality shows. And I had the thought to... Um, I said to my marketing manager at the time, I feel I should be on television. And, um, and so this is, this is kind of separate because Ian, he, he'd entered me into awards, but he hadn't specifically gone down a TV route particularly. Right. And so my right. marketing manager said, okay, well, we'll look into that. And he made a few calls and he got a guy in who was a specialist in TV uh, to have a meeting and this guy said to me I remember the meeting he said do you have any idea how difficult it is to get on television and I'm like no actually I I don't <laughs> I have no idea how difficult that is at all I just had this sort of inspiration and this feeling and he just said well we'd have to get you an agent we'd have to get you a, a show reel we'd have to put you out to, uh, to auditions blah 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 and we were very busy at the time, and I just said to my marketing manager, like, that uh, sounds like too much like hard work, and we're really busy. Let's just mm. park it. And literally within, like, a week, one of my marketing team came in and said, we've just got an email from the BBC. They're doing a new show called Dragon's Den. Are you interested in being on it? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> so it was kind wow. of, there was a bit of a meta, there was a combination of practical action yeah. And, and metaphysical, what I would call metaphysical magic, you know, because so, it always starts with the seed of an intention, doesn't it? Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. That's, yeah. So it was, meant to ha it was meant to happen. You put that out there to the universe all those years ago, and it manifested for you. Amazing. Yeah. And it, yes. And if I, I mean, obviously, we, you know, we live life forwards and we understand it backwards, because at the time... I didn't realize this, but I was about to lose my business, Red Letter Days, which I built literally from nothing at the age of 24 on a shoestring budget. And I built it into this multi-million turnover market leading brand, which was making a million pound profit a year. And everything was very rosy in my garden. You know, I was winning awards and getting these TV invitations. So I really was flying high. And, you know, I don't think you ever realize quite how fine that line between success and failure is. Because yeah. within a, a few years, by the time actually Dragon's Den, Dragon's Den actually aired in January 2005, I filmed the second series in May 2005. And it broadcast in December 2005. But in the intervening period, on the 1st of August 2005, we went into administration and because the BBC had filmed that second series, they couldn't pull it because it's a massive investment. Mm. So in that sandwich, uh, I went essentially, the, I lost my business and the press had an absolute field day, I like imagine, Dragon yeah. Fails and they would just, and this was before the big crash of 2008 where everyone crashed. Yeah. So I was kind, I was going in before everyone, the masses did. Because by, mm. you know, by 2009, everyone was a failure, you know, so, but they literally, the media had a field day and it was a very, very cathartic, difficult period of my life, mm. you know. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And how, how did you overcome that? Well, this is the, this is the thing is that at the time it was like the worst possible thing that could ever happen. You know, and it was like, I was like holding on like a woman, like possessed. 
desperately like my nails going down the side of a ship like no <laughs> and I realized now looking back I should have let go a lot earlier but I fought for two two three three years to really save the business just going into battle every day and then finally it was kind of taken away from me and I literally I had I was pregnant as well and I had my baby on the Sunday I went back to work on the Monday into crises meetings. Uh, I was being like, I was going to London doing interviews for the Sunday times, trying to quell rumors that the business was in trouble, like on the Wednesday with my newborn baby in tow. I went to see Peter and Theo, my fellow dragons on the Friday saying, I need help. Can you finance? I need 2 million pounds basically to, to refinance it. And then I lost it on the Monday. So I had this one week old baby and it was uh, actually by that point, it was a massive relief. And it was the 1st of August, 2005, the sun was shining. I had this beautiful one week old baby. Mm. And I just really saw that this was the most amazing sort of consolation gift that the universe mm. had given me. And then of course, what then immediately happened was I started to get invited to speak at events like yours. I got a publishing deal and a royalty advance. Um, and I wrote a book called Business Nightmares. And Brilliant. it opened a whole new world for me of basically inspiring, motivating and helping other entrepreneurs on their business journey. And that, that's what I've been doing pretty much for the last 14 years, you know. Yeah amazing oh what a, what a story and i i truly believe you know when something happens that's negative for you at the time at the time it just feels i can definitely relate to what you're saying and at the time you think you know and then you're asking for help and then some can't help you some can't you're on your own i can't imagine how you was feeling that you you just had your baby as well but then you know on the flip side of that you on reflection as you rightly said you should have let go a lot earlier because then it most probably wouldn't have caused you so much stress as well. And then you'd have been able to create what you've created um, from sort of then. And when there's something negative happens, there's always the reason for that. I believe that. Well, the point is about it, Des, and I'm, I'm going to maybe touch on this. Let me just adjust this camera. I'm going to touch on this when I, when I speak is that yeah. uh, we're always in judgment. You know, we're always judging stuff as good, bad, right, wrong. And it's the judgment that creates the suffering because mm. I was just judging, oh, this is bad. But actually, with hindsight, it was a brilliant thing because it set me on the path of, of aligning to my sole purpose mm. and a path of self-transformation and healing, which has been utterly magical and transformational, which has led to huge amounts of happiness in my life way more than when I look back and I was such a stressed out <laughs> alpha female like living in adrenaline like my whole life and just mm. just it was crazy it was insanity when I look back you know so I it was almost like a reprieve a universal reprieve but I couldn't see the gift in it and this is one of the things that, that you know that's um in the Tao, you know it's like the only chat the only problem is really our judgment because life yeah. is neutral in essence yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, i suppose it relates to the the meaning we give it as well like you say yeah. about the judgment the same thing the meaning you give any situation and then you're going to react so if you're going to focus that oh it's bad you're going to react so it's bad and try and survive but if you focus exactly. on that it's good and and looking for positive options, then your brain is going to search for solutions. It's like when I'm thinking about stuff and I'm going through a lot of stress and I'm thinking, hold on a minute, how can I make this good for me? And then I look at the answers to that to make it good for me instead of saying, <laughs> making people wrong and, and being upset and feeling sorry for myself. But it's, it's easier said than done, as, as, you, as you know as well. But yeah, I believe yeah. you're saying in relation to... Oh, that's, a, that's amazing. So at the moment, tell us about your book. About business nightmares. Yeah, how did that come about, and 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 you know what is it? What's 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 the book involved? Tell us, a, tell tell everybody about well, that book. 
the beautiful thing was that I just literally, a publisher, a business publisher, Crimson, just approached me and said, we want you to write a book. Here's a royalty advance. You can write on anything you want. You know, it was like, it wasn't like, you know, J.K. Rowling having to, like, write a book and then go around lots of publishers trying to sell it in. It was literally, here's a chunk of money, which mm. was a gr wonderful gift and an opportunity. And obviously, I couldn't write about how I made it. I thought I would write about the fine line between success and failure. And so it wasn't just my story, but I researched the story of 20 other top entrepreneurs and how they reached Excellent. that that line that yeah. fine line and either how they pulled back from it or how they fell over it and re rehabilitated themselves so it was a very cathartic book and i wove my own experiences throughout and each chapter was a piece of guidance for entrepreneurs reading it and i've had still people get that book and still people book one-to-one -one sessions with me of like i googled like I'm going through a business nightmare and your book popped up and, and that's why I've booked Brilliant. a session with you. So it's kind of, it's quite sweet really because it was written at a very, really as a catharsis for me back in 2007 when I was actually pregnant with my fifth son, Jack. So it was, that was a very beautiful year actually. And actually that was the last pig year. So that was 12 years ago, 2007. Yeah. Wow. So, but I've written well, a, another book since then called Prosperity, which is, wow. um, yeah, which I, I kind of self-published that, but I only did a limited edition. So that's, uh, mm. that's available on Amazon as an ebook. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, um, let me just say hello to some of the people that's come on to this live here as well. Um, um, Les Sharan, she's from Birmingham. Hi, Les Sharan. Gulruk. Hi, Gulruk. Um, Gulruk Gul says hello. Hi, Des hi, and Gul. Rachel. Hi, hi, Nadia. <laughs> I see hi, Jamie Nadia. Lee Grace is on as well. Simon, Basil, Simon, Basil, Simon, Basil, Simon, Basil, Simon, Basil, Simon, Basil, Stuart, um, Sharon Calix, she's another speaker. She's an award winning social media expert. She's saying, amazing start. Looking forward to hearing more from you, Rachel. You'll meet her on, on the 24th, Rachel. Um, Ashraf, hi, Ashraf. Mariana, hi, Mariana. Uh, Jamie. And Rose Duggle as well. Thanks, guys. This is talking about um, Rachel's story, her journey, how she became the first uh, female to appear on the first two series of Dragon's Den. And she's speaking at my fifth up and coming Women in Business conference, which takes place uh, five weeks tomorrow at the Holiday Inn Kensington. And the link is at the bottom for more information about the tickets as well. So, Rachel, what, what, without giving too much away, because we want people to come for the next thing when you're on stage, what, what should we expect from you um, on when you speak on stage at the next event? What should people be taking away from that? Not too much. Just give them a little bit enough to, to get them to bring the whole of the world to come. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually very grateful to you, Des, because, because it's a very specific brief to speak to women in business. And I, so I started to research women in business and what's going on in that world. And because I always tailor everything I do very specifically for audiences, you know, whether it's a corporate yeah. audience or small business audience. And one of the really interesting things is that the the, the failure rate of women in business is massively high. It's way higher than the normal, which is two thirds of all businesses failing within the first 18 months. It's actually yeah. 90%. And so I, I, I kind of realized from that, that actually most women in business, whatever their face to the world, because we all put on a wonderful face to the world, don't we? Must be mm. behind the kind of mask, really struggling and thinking, what am I doing wrong? And so it's, it's inspired me to create some new material, which has even further inspired me, as well as creating my new kind of um, talk for you, Des. But it's also inspired me to create a new online program, which Brilliant. I will bring out, you know, uh, probably on the, near to your event, actually. I'm hopefully get, get it out on the spring equinox, which is a, a, a nice time of rising energy. But I'm calling yeah. it um, the game of business and how to play it, which is kind of borrowed from 
a metaphysical author called Florence Scovel Shin, and she wrote a book. It's actually the very first metaphysical book I ever picked up at a mind body spirit show long before I knew, understood about all this world, called The Game of Life and How to Play It. And um, it kind of opens by saying, most people think life is a battle and they set out to win it, but actually life is a game and I'm going to show you how to play it. And so what I thought I would do with your audience is share some really deep insights how, as to how they can move from that place of stress in business and the fighting and the kind of hell realm that I lived through. Even though I was making millions, it was still a hell realm, you know. Mm-hmm. How they can actually move from that into actually really enjoying and having fun with and creating a luscious flowing business which is effortless and fun and joyful and light and a completely different energy so that's kind of what i'm trying to build in that's my intention i should say there is no try <laughs> that's my intention <laughs> is to create a an in, entertaining and inspiring talk for you des which really helps to completely transform people's business experience yeah wow thank you and that's without giving too much away uh, that's amazing i'm i'm looking forward to that myself um and i cannot wait wait for that everybody we're going to be doing a, um, a few more lives between now and the event with different topics with rachel and um some more people are just making some comments. We've got Ahmed says, always good to see you, Desmond. Good to see you, Bob. Um, he says, the amount of potential of women in business is massively underestimated and untapped. Yes. And he's put, and, and then he's put a book, a link of the game, a book from Amazon, The Game of Life and How to Play It. And um, says he will buy and read. Yeah. I, just, I just want to mention something about that, Des. And you will probably have found this about books, is that you can read them and not get them, and then read them again and again. And each time you read them, you get a deeper insight. And, and that is definitely one of those books, because when I read it way back in probably like the late 1990s for the first time, I just didn't get it. And I just sort of like, oh, that sounds mm. interesting. But I didn't really understand it. I didn't actually mm. truly land it and understand it fully until I'd done a lot of very deep work, especially work like I went to Peru three times, working with shamans, doing medicine journeys, ayahuasca, seeing beyond the veil. And then when I read the book again, and interestingly, I went to Egypt last year and our host gave us a goodie bag and the complete works of Florence Scovel Shin were in the goodie bag. And it just sat on my bedside table and like, and I thought, oh, I've already read that. I don't need to read it again. I'm like, oh my God, that, I see it's a gift. And I read it again this week and it like completely landed like ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. Like, oh my God, I absolutely get this book. So it's right. really interesting because I must have read it over the years at least 20 times. It's an absolute mm. classic. So it's kind of it's interpreting it for a modern audience, you know. Yeah. That's my aim. Fantastic. And I agree, you know, depending on – I've read a book once once, and then read it again, and it's like it's a completely different book. And that's because yes. of what I had going on in here at the time. Absolutely. Know, so. We can only receive – you know the amount that we're recept like from um that we're receptive to you know so this is always the challenge with metaphysical teachings because actually they don't work through the mind they work from an energetic point of view which is why i'm going to make my session actually quite experiential having that was my first business was Red Letter Days, which was an experiences business. So I really get how experiential stuff rather than mind stuff, when you're, when you're actually feeling through the body, yeah. it's much more powerful and resonant, mm. you know. Yeah. Well, listen, thanks very much for your time on this Saturday afternoon. Um, thank everybody for coming along onto this live. If you can please share this as well, because it could be somebody, um, your friends, 
family that could be really inspired by this. Um, we're going to be having some more regular lives um, with Rachel. Please connect with, with her. Um, uh, do you have a, a page, Rachel? Do you have a website? Your website live? Do yes, you have a it's page? Uh, rachelelnor.com. And you can get there through my Facebook profile quite easily too. Brilliant. And she's very approachable. Don't be afraid. She don't buy it. Um, inbox her, add her on Facebook and connect with her. And uh, I'm sure she can help you to improve what you need to do with your business as well. Thank you for your time today, Rachel. Um, have Thanks, a, an Dennis. amazing week. Have an amazing weekend. And I'm um, looking forward to seeing you in five weeks. And also, um, we'll do some more lives as well. So to get some more out there for the people to know as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thanks a lot. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Have a great weekend.